This is how I would learn to run if I could start over. For context, I started out unfit, overweight, and not being able to run to the end of the block. But I was eventually able to run a sub 90 minute half marathon, a 19 minute 5K, and a three hour 24 minute marathon at the end of a full Ironman triathlon. But the problem was that I struggled with running for years, unable to make any progress until I figured out how people really should be learning how to run. What's up motivators? My name is Taryn. When ordinary people want to accomplish something extraordinary in endurance sports, they choose our totally free mode of training plans. You ready to take on that next big endurance challenge? Let's do it. To tell you what I would change with how people learn how to run, I need to first tell you how I was trying to learn how to run. I started like most people with a couch to 5K program where I ran and walked for weeks and weeks until I could finally run nonstop. For two years, I didn't get any faster, I always felt beat up after runs, and I struggled with shin splints, knee pain, and lower back stiffness. After two years, I had to either give up running or change how I run completely. And after just three months of relearning how to run, I shaved almost 10 minutes off my 10K time, five minutes off my 5K time, and over 20 minutes off my half marathon time. What I found was that there are four big things that learn to run programs don't include in their workouts and coaches never talk about. Not talking about these things teaches people how to run with bad technique and we all plateau really quickly, never getting any faster, constantly developing pains and injuries. The first of these four things that I would change is learning to run with good run technique. What happens with most learn to run training programs is you tend to just shuffle along because the only focus of the programs is running for a set amount of time. And when people are just learning how to run, it beats up our bodies a lot. So we tend to get into a really shuffly kind of run stride. And that shuffly run stride is putting on the brakes. It's not efficient. It's sending a ton of force up through our body that develops injury. People tend to want to see what they're capable of and then want to make improvements. And with these learn to run training programs that don't build a good foundation of run technique, everyone is just set up to plateau because you don't have the building blocks to be able to improve your running. What I did when I relearned how to run was I stopped every three minutes during every single run that I went on and I readdressed good run technique. Good run technique is when you're landing underneath your center of gravity. You can land on your heel, your midfoot, your forefoot, as long as you aren't landing out front of your body putting on the brakes. What you do when you stop every three minutes during a run is jump up and down in place, then start doing butt kicks, then lean forward from the ankles and you'll instantly be landing underneath your center of gravity. You'll be using the momentum of your body to pull yourself forward instead of putting on the brakes out in front of your body. Try to run with this sensation of using the momentum and landing underneath your body as long as you can and then stop every three minutes and repeat. After about three weeks, running is going to feel much more smooth and you are going to have developed a very good run technique. The second thing that I changed when I relearned how to run was I changed how fast I ran. You see, most learn to run training programs just go out and want you to run. And they develop that shuffly technique that tends to be just at a single speed. But that single speed doesn't really do anything to improve our running because it's not fast enough to actually make us any faster. And it's not slow enough for us to do for a longer period of time so that we can build endurance. So what I started doing was I polarized my run training. I was running three times a week and what I did two of those three runs was I ran really, really slowly. You can use a heart rate monitor to do this where you should be running in your zone two heart rate. You can use some pace calculators where you're running in your zone one or two pace, or you can just use the talk test and make sure that you can talk really easily. And that's a good metric for how easily you should be running. But in one of those three runs, I ran really hard with intervals. And I'm talking really, really hard. I started with 10 second wind sprints, built up to 15 and 20 second wind sprints with as much as three or four minutes rest between, all to teach my body how to turn over my legs quickly. I gradually built that from those 15 to 20 second intervals with three to four minutes rest up to four to six minute intervals with one to two minutes rest. So those low intensity runs were easy enough that I was able to build up the duration of those so that I could actually build endurance. And then the interval runs were fast enough so that I could actually build speed. So all of a sudden I could run faster for longer. The third thing that I needed to change, this one took a lot of years to learn because no coaches really talked about it back then for runners to include strength training. 
Once I included strength training, all of a sudden, my lower back stiffness went away, my knee injuries completely vanished, and my shin splints completely vanished. Fact of the matter is that when we are learning how to run, our bodies have a lot of imbalances that typically haven't been addressed in our day-to-day -day lives. We develop a lot of tightness in our chest, and our hips from running. All of our glutes and stabilizer muscles tend to be very inactive, and we have to reawaken those muscles so that they can function well during every step of our run stride. And the single best performance enhancer that we can do as endurance athletes is strength training. Even just one 30 minute session every single week is much better than spending all of that time running without doing any strength training. The fourth and final thing that I needed to change was I needed to develop good run technique in multiple different planes and ranges of motion. You see, it's not enough just to go and learn how to run well on flat ground that is perfectly level on a nice smooth concrete surface. It's not going to teach us how to actually be a good athlete. All of a sudden when you have to climb up a curb or climb up some stairs or you have to take a turn, it's very likely that you'll get injured. If our body isn't forced into moving in different ranges of motion, it's just going to want to get really good and efficient doing a single range of motion. So what I had to change was I had to have one run per week that was on trails and hills. And they didn't have to be extremely big trails where I'm driving out three hours into the desert and the mountains to run. It could just be soft trails, slight trails, with a little bit of side to side movement so that I had to make tiny little micro adjustments where my foot would maybe have to move a little bit to one side of me, a little bit further out. What happened when I was able to do this is my rate of injuries went way, way down. In fact, studies have shown that the more we run on trails, the less likely we are as runners to get injured. It's literally one of the single biggest things that we can do to reduce our likelihood of injury. Now these four things didn't just change my run technique. Everyone that you see on screen is a user of the Motive Training app where we include trail running, strength training, polarized training, good run technique cues, all baked into the training plan. And what we find is people say that they probably train about 20% less than most training plans that they've had, but they get about 20 to 30% better. And that's because they're using their body efficiently in their run training. Now I wanna turn it over to you to help the running community. Let me know in the comments below what you feel the biggest mistake you made when you were learning how to run. Finally, click the video that's on the screen right now if you wanna see how to create a couch to 5K training plan that uses these four principles we just discussed to teach runners to run much better than all other couch to 5K training programs out there. Later, motivators.